it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part five of my Iron Man Hulkbuster project. So in the previous parts, um, we built the frame out of wood. I've actually sprayed it all silver now. Last time I left you with the torso being separate from the legs and I've actually attached those now so that we've got bungee cords either side which allow this to move around. Um, in the brief testing I've done, it works quite well. It's quite comfortable to move in. But we need to do something about latching the legs in now, which I can't reach when I'm standing up. So we need to talk about the cable-assisted latching mechanisms for the snowboard bindings for the boots, and the pins that lock the knees in place, so that I can lock and unlock those when I'm standing up in the suit and I can get in and out of it. I should also point out that this, this is just the frame for the suit. There's going to be multiple shells on the outside and other intermediate layers of fake mechanics to make up the impression of the costume. So let's have a closer look at these snowboard bindings. What we've basically got is a latch that latches at the back and then the boots can come out. So I can't bend down to reach these anymore with the torso on and my body in it. So what we need is something fairly simplistic that pulls this up and that will latch into position. And then we need another way of remotely pulling it down again. Um, if we pull directly down, it's not going to work very well. We actually need to pull it out and then allow it to be pulled down. So I think the best solution is if we make a mechanism that pushes this white piece away from the blue back piece, like so, and then it should flip open. So that should be fairly easy to operate with a cable. So what I've got here are some bicycle brake cables. So uh, let's just pull that out of there in fact. These are really cheap ones. Basically, it's a Bowden cable, so as you uh, obviously pull one, it pulls the other one. And these are for rear brakes on bikes that have got quite a long reach. Um, they're also quite long. The, I've got some front brake ones, but they're much shorter. So I think what we need to do um, is basically make a mechanism so we can pull on one end of the cable, and that'll push this thing apart. So um, let's have a look at some CAD. So here's the first part, which is rather uninteresting looking. This is um, simply put a cap which goes onto the um, lever on the back of the boot latch. Um, that basically will bolt on through some bolts in these holes and it allows a larger piece of 8mm rod to be inserted through there to make a pivot. Next part is a bit more interesting to look at. This is actually um, effectively a pair of rails with a shuttle which slide on it and um, another interesting looking clamp and that's for clamping the end of the bicycle brake cord so that we can pull the shuttle towards the, the um, end stop effectively along this shuttle. These pieces will be turned on their sides to, uh, to make a rail, the shuttle slides in and the other sort of piece of the bicycle brake cord will rest in that hole there pulling the cord through the um, piece there so it can ride over the end stop it's rather hard to explain. Uh, it took me a while to think up how exactly I was going to do it because we need to push the um, clamp for the boots outside the uh, edge of the chassis. So anyway, it will become clear once I print it and I can show you them in real life. So here's my sliding mechanism. I've really had to go at these parts with some acetone and also a sanding block, which is why they're quite shiny in some places. And also there's some white residue on, which is just dust from sanding them. The reason for that is I've dipped the ends in acetone basically to make them slightly stronger so they don't split on the build lines, although they're printed 100% solid, so they're fairly tough. And I've also sanded them so they slide quite well. So um, we've got basically these two rails that I showed you, which, uh, We'll screw onto the chassis like so, and this shuttle thing that goes in between them and slides up and down. And then we've got the little cap at the end that holds the end of the bike cord. Um, and that fits almost between them, but actually on top of them, so it's at the same height as, of the, as the base of the shuttle. So that goes like so, and I'll screw in between them. So, um, if we look at the bicycle brake cord, what we should find is that should insert nicely in there and that plugs into the hole and then obviously if I operate the other end of it 
we get this and that allows this shuttle to be pulled all the way along towards the cable holder and in fact the um, cable holder will slide all the way into this and the result of that is that we can actually slide this all the way past the end of the rail and that will push the back of the boot clamp actually outside the chassis of the Hulkbuster. So let's have a look at the other piece which I showed you, which I've also printed. So the cap piece I showed you fits quite nicely onto the back of the mechanism that clamps the boot. Um, and I've got the two bolts in there. There's actually nuts on the other side which hold the bolts and, and they fit quite nicely into the features of this clamp piece. So obviously we've got this bolt in the back here which um, we intend to pull, and um, we can pull it closed quite easily with just any cable, but pushing it's going to require pushing it in this direction. And basically we need to position the sliders, or the slider and the shuttle on here, so that when we pull the cable, it pushes the back of the boot clamp away. So let's get that screwed on and see how well it works. So I fitted both my rails and I fitted the um, little cable end clamp. So this is now back on here again. So if we hook that in there and slot this in here, and when I pull the other end of the cable, it should slide up, which it does. So we just need to push this back. And hopefully when I pull this, should unlatch the binding which seems to work quite well so I just need um, some sort of spring return for that let's pull that again here's the other end that seems to work quite well so I've just routed the cable around so that it comes all the way to the top here here's the other end which is more than long enough to go into the torso at least so I can reach it and I've just cable tied it off that side there so there's enough slack that it can move and obviously if I pull the end now that releases the boot. So here's the next part we're going to print which is for the knee latch. At the moment there's a bolt which I put in and take out by hand. That bolt is going to go through the hole at the pointy end. Um, obviously this piece um, latches onto the base which is screwed onto the chassis of the Hulkbuster. And then there's a little clip which actually um, I've drawn to the side here but it turns around 90 degrees in two directions and goes in the hole so that clamps the cable basically it's a, got two screws and it's a cable clamp for the end of the bicycle brake cord that should allow me to push and pull the bolt remotely so here is our mechanism now I've printed it um, again it's cable controlled with a very similar cable to the boot latch and if I push the end of the cable it unlatches and allows the top of the knee to freely move and if I pull the cable Locate the hole, it pulls back in again. So I probably need to have a spring in there somewhere which holds it in one position or the other and then have a latch on the other end of the cable. But for now it works well enough that I can climb in and unlock and lock the joints as I wish to do so. The other end of the cable is right up there. All right, so here we are all back together. I've uh, duplicated those 3D printed parts on the other side. So we've got two sets of boot unlatching mechanisms and two sets of knee locking mechanisms. Um, to actually lock the boots in place to start with, I've just got these crap yellow strings for now that pull the back up because that's a fairly trivial task. Eventually these strings will be replaced with some proper um, cables. I've just run out of rear bicycle brake cords so I don't have anything long enough to reach. Uh, but for now I can pull those to, to lock the boots in place when I climb into it. So um, there's another latch I haven't done yet which is going to go here. For now I've got these clips that um, hold the bungee section together. So uh, I'll have another clamp that locks that in place so the top doesn't get too top heavy and fall over when it's got the arms and all the other paraphernalia on it. So those will lock before I climb in and when I climb out for now I've just got these clips. Uh, that's temporary to hold the other end of the bungee and I've got obviously the same on the other side. So um, the cables just run up here for now. I will eventually put proper levers on the top 
to push and pull them and also the return spring or the spring to hold this so that the bolt stays in place and uh, the other ones just run up here so they're not in the most convenient place but it's good enough for me to do a test so uh, I've already got my snowboard boots on so let's pop this back in its tripod we'll see if I can climb in, walk around and climb out again so if I take these clips off first I'm just going to pop those on there Right, so it should be to pick up the shoulders, and if I pull the yellow strings, it's a bit awkward with these. Hopefully, we'll have some proper cables eventually. Right, that's one. Where's the other one gone? And that's the other one. Uh, right, so if I push these, wiggle that knee a bit, I should be to unlock the knee. There's one. And there's the other one. So that's all the flexibility, and uh, see I can move around, and this the bungees here allow me to twist and turn this. Obviously there's not going to be too much motion, if you can imagine it having absolutely massive arms on with my, my arms inside. Um, you know, I can get quite a good swing there to walk. Quite a lot of flexibility. I can walk forward relatively easy if I swing from side to side. Um, of course using the fake toes that allow me to twist into all sorts of positions and walk backwards quite easily. So I can do this sort of thing. You can imagine I'm actually holding the arms so I can lift this off my shoulders if I need to slightly and uh, go into all sorts of different poses. So been quite well in terms of flexibility. So I'm just going to turn round. Hopefully you can see me then relatching the suit. So uh, let's just find those again and lock the knees in place. There's one. There's the other. Just make sure those are done up tight. And then if I find the front ones. So there's one and there's the other. And then, if I'm clever, give it a step down, uh, relock the joints up here, and we should be able to walk away and leave it standing there. So that's the end of this video. Obviously, there's some minor tuning to do there. Playing back that little bit of video I just showed you of unhooking the ankles, and um, I can see there's quite a lot of tension in those hooks. Um, so I probably need to make a slightly sturdier arrangement where the bolts are attached to the back of the snowboard bindings. Um, and obviously I need to put the return springs on and some other bits and pieces. So check out my YouTube channel for part six, which will be coming in a couple of weeks, when I'll hopefully be working my way up to work on the arm mechanism, uh, which is going to be mechatronic from the elbow down. Uh, you can also check out my Facebook page, Twitter, Pinterest, and other social media pages in the description of this video for sneak peeks and updates. And also don't forget my Patreon crowdfunding campaign, where you can get some exclusive rewards, including access to a live broadcast with me.